Let's look at example three, and we're going to evaluate the limit of some rational functions. And remember that a rational function is just the quotient of two polynomials, so we can evaluate each of the polynomials separately. Remember that the limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits, but in the end, we just need to evaluate the numerator and the denominator at 1. So we get 1 squared minus 2 times 1 plus 3 all over 1 plus 4. And the limit is equal to 2 thirds. All right, so I added this extra step to show that the property was being used. You can actually go right in and evaluate. So when you are solving a limit or evaluating a limit, Really the first thing you want to do is direct substitution. You get to substitute in. So for, for b here, we have the limit of a quotient as x approaches 2. We're going to substitute 2 in wherever we see an x. So substituting in, we'll evaluate the numerator and the denominator. In the numerator we get 0, and in the denominator we get 0. Now, this does not mean that the function or the limit is undefined. This is what we call indeterminate. Indeterminate means basically that we need to do more work. It means that by substituting in we didn't get the information that we needed to be able to evaluate this limit. The limit may exist, the limit may not exist. What I always tell my students when they see 0 over 0, or when they see an indeterminate form, is that we have to do more work. So generally with rational functions, when you get 0 over 0, it means that you've got a common factor. And it also means that there's a hole in the graph, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the limit, this limit up here, is actually equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of x minus 5 times x minus 2 all over x plus 2 times x minus 2. The x minus 2's cancel and now I can substitute the 2. I get 2 minus 5 over 2 plus 2 which equals negative 3 fourths. So the limit as x approaches 2 of this rational function is equal to negative 3 fourths but what we do know is that f of 2 is not defined. We know that when you substitute 2 into this function, you do not get a finite value. But let's look at it on the calculator. Let's put this function in y equals. And, you know, we've got a rational function here. And, and often when you, when you graph a rational function, you expect to get asymptotes, some vertical asymptotes, maybe some horizontal asymptotes. Let's go and graph this. I'm going to do a zoom 6, which is a standard window. It's a zoom 6. Oops, I did a syntax error. I'm going to, instead of leaving this out of the video, I'm going to go in and check out and see what I did wrong. So a syntax error means you type something in wrong. Sometimes it means you use the negative sign instead of a subtraction, but here I see that I've got an extra um, plus sign in there. All I had to do is hit delete, and we'll try that again. So zoom 6. All right, so we do have one vertical asymptote. Um, what I care about is what's going on at 2. So I'm going to trace 2. So I hit trace, and then I hit 2, and then I'm going to hit enter. And you'll see that it's not giving you a y, y value. Now we talked before about how to use the calculator to evaluate a function, and when there is no y value showing up, that means it doesn't exist. Now that I've traced on 2, I'm going to zoom in, just to get a little bit, see if I can see what's going on. When you hit zoom and enter, you have to hit enter again. So I want to see what's happening at 2, but the calculator, again, if I trace 2, The calculator is not going to give me a y value. There isn't one there, although the calculator is not perfect and it doesn't necessarily show that. Let me drag the screen over. So what's really happening is that at the value of 2, there is no value on the graph. There is no y value that corresponds to 2. There's actually a hole. 
What I know is that r of 2 does not exist, but the limit of r of x as x approaches 2 is equal to negative 3 fourths. We also know that, that, that the common factor, x minus 2, is actually a way to find out where the hole exists. When there is a common factor, you will have a hole in your graph, and that hole will exist when you set the common factor. And you can find out where that hole exists by setting your common factor equal to zero and solving. So we know that there, a hole exists at x equals 2, and if we wanted to fill that hole in, we know that once we cancel the common factor, when we evaluated the 2 minus 5 over the x plus 2, or the 2 plus 2, we got negative 3 fourths. We know that the actual hole, the ordered pair that represents that hole, is going to be 2 negative 3 fourths. Let's look at another example involving a quotient. We're going to evaluate the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over 5 plus h minus 1 fifth over h. We will start by direct substitution. So we'll have 1 over 5 plus 0 minus 1 over 5 all over 0, which gives us 0 over 0. So like in the last example, we got an indeterminate form, meaning that we need to do more work. But the do more work is not always factoring. There are other strategies depending on the type of expression we're dealing with. And although this is a function that involves fractions, it is not a rational function. Rational functions are a quotient of two polynomials, and these are not polynomials. But there is a strategy that we're going to use here. We're going to rewrite this, got the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over 5 plus h. I'm going to leave a little room because what I am going to do is some algebraic manipulation. This is a complex fraction and I want to simplify it by combining the numerator and the denominator into one fraction and then multiplying by the reciprocal. That's one strategy. The other strategy would be to multiply all uh, terms in the numerator and the denominator by the LCD. You can use whichever method you'd like. I'm going to multiply, just combine the numerator into one fraction. So I multiply by 5 over 5. I'll multiply this fraction by 5 plus h over 5 plus h. I'm going to simplify. So simplifying by building each of the fractions. And now I'm subtracting this second term, I need to distribute that negative on both the 5 and the h, giving me the following. So the 5's will cancel, leaving me with negative h divided by 5 times 5 plus h all over h. I'm now going to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. When I multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, the h's cancel out leaving me with the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 1 over 5 times 5 plus h, which equals negative 1 over 25. So the value of the original limit is negative 1 25th. So far, we've had two scenarios where we got an indeterminate form. With the rational function, when you evaluate the limit and the result is 0 over 0, you should try to factor and remove that common factor. If you have another type of fractional expression and you get 0 over 0, another strategy is to take that complex fraction and try to simplify it. And usually through algebraic manipulation, you can come to some you know, a conclusion as to whether there is a limit or there isn't a limit. But 0 over 0 just tells us that we need to do more work. All right, so we'll start the next video by having you practice a few problems.